Titan Aviation Fuels welcomes you to our driver certification training class. Watching this video is an important requirement to become a Titan certified carrier. All drivers must be trained in accordance with Titan's policies to transport our aviation products. At this time, you have already taken the pre-test portion of this program. Your instructor will have reviewed the test with you and discussed any questions or concerns you may have. After watching this video, you will be instructed to take the final exam and must achieve a score of 100% to receive your driver certification card. As one of the nation's largest suppliers of aviation fuel, Titan strives to safely deliver the highest quality product possible. We take fuel quality control very seriously. In an effort to maintain our quality control standards, each of Titan's customers have been trained in the proper procedures for receiving aviation fuel. They expect the best from us, just as we expect the best from you. Titan has strict quality control requirements and is proud to have the best trained drivers in the industry delivering our aviation fuel. Unlike highway vehicles, planes cannot pull off the road when there is engine trouble. Each time a passenger boards a plane, they are entrusting the quality of the fuel to us. Your attention to detail on these loading and offloading procedures will ensure that everyone enjoys a safe flight. It is of the utmost importance that all carriers use dedicated Jet A and Avgas trailers, or those that have been steam cleaned and dried prior to loading. Note steam clean with water only. No type of cleaning compound, agent, or soap is authorized. The inspection of these transport trailers should be done before, during, and after each delivery. When you use our Titan release certificate with each product load, it will guide you through the necessary steps to provide the highest quality product, correct gallons, and leave us with a satisfied customer. There are two grades of aviation products delivered from Titan. 100 LL Avgas is dyed blue and meets specifications for reciprocating engines. The Energy Institute, or EI approved decal, is red with white letters and has a blue band on the left side. Jet A Aviation Turbine Fuel is a distillate fuel which may range in color from water white to straw color. It meets specifications for turbine or jet engines. The EI approved decal is black with white letters and includes one black band. It's important to distinguish between these fuels as jet fuel will harm reciprocating engines. This means if Avgas is contaminated with jet fuel, there is a high probability of severe engine damage that may result in an aircraft accident. Aircraft crashes due to fuel contamination have happened and have caused loss of life. After arriving at the terminal, you should verify the fuel order against the product type you intend to load and stop at the designated point at the loading rack. Inspect the area for product spills or any obstructions and notify terminal personnel of any problems. Cigarettes, e-cigarettes or other smoking devices are strictly prohibited in the loading area. Turn off all cell phones, vehicle lights, radios and other electrical equipment and check the grade markings at the rack to ensure that the proper product is being loaded. Once the transport is correctly positioned at the loading rack, the driver should apply the handbrake, turn off the engine, and locate the nearest emergency shutdown switch and fire extinguisher. The bonding clip or scully plug at the loading rack must be connected to the designated point on the transport trailer. The vapor recovery line should be connected where required. Again, cell phone usage during loading and offloading procedures is strictly prohibited and may result in suspension from the facility. The preload inspection starts with checking the grade markings or placards. Properly steam cleaned and dried trailers will not have placards since there will not be any product residue. They will need to be correctly placarded before leaving the terminal. Proper Department of Transportation permanent placards are mandatory, 1863 for Jet A, and 1203 for Avgas. Before aviation products are loaded, the transport driver opens all internal valves and drains each compartment into a bonded stainless steel or bonded white porcelain bucket to ensure that the transport is free of water or other contaminants. The bucket must be bonded or a fire could occur due to a static charge. Transports containing excessive amounts of water or other contaminants are not acceptable and will require steam cleaning and drying prior to use. 
any transport showing evidence of automotive gasoline, diesel, or any other petroleum product cannot be loaded under any circumstance. The driver should confirm that all compartments are completely drained and then close the internal safety valves. At this time, the driver should begin to complete the preload inspection on the Titan release certificate. There are separate release certificates for Jet A and for Avgas. The driver shall legibly print the following. Supply terminal where product is to be lifted. Product type, trailer number, driver name, transport company name, batch gravity from the certificate of analysis, bill of lading number from the current load, the date, batch number, quantity, tank number, and condition of the transport equipment is dedicated or steam cleaned and dried. A certificate from the facility that performs the steam cleaning and drying must accompany the certificate of analysis and have an authorized signature from the tank cleaning service. The loading arm is then connected and the corresponding transport foot valve is opened. The loading meter is set to zero and the loading pump is switched on or computerized loading system is activated by using the dead man. The dead man must be held during the entire time the product is loaded to the transport. Check all hoses and connections for drips or leaks while loading. In the event of an emergency or spill, release the dead man or activate the emergency shutdown switch and notify terminal personnel immediately. Do not start or move the transport until the spill is cleaned up. Each terminal facility should have a spill or emergency response procedures manual available for reference. If loading jet product with fuel system icing inhibitor, better known as Fizzy, the meter readings are mandatory and must include some means of documentation to state the amount of Fizzy injected. 1.25 gallons per 1,000 gallons is the proper ratio. The amount of Fizzy must also be indicated on the bill of lading. After loading, the pump is switched off or the computerized loading system is deactivated. Disconnect the vapor recovery line and store it in the appropriate load rack connection. The loading arm and bonding clip or scully plug is disconnected. Close all internal safety valves. Before leaving the product loading rack, visually inspect the area for spills, leaks, or any possible hazards. The transport truck may be moved to a more convenient settling and inspection area if needed, but be aware if your transport is still in a spill containment area. A one-gallon sample will be drawn from each compartment into a bonded white porcelain bucket. For a single compartment trailer, a minimum of two gallons is required. Each sample will be examined for any contaminants by either the driver or facility personnel and documented accordingly on the release certificate. The pink copy of the release certificate should be left with the terminal facility personnel. If allowed by the terminal, the driver must perform an API gravity test. This test can be completed with the traditional hydrometer method or by using a handheld densitometer. When determining the gravity using a hydrometer, the driver will first place fuel into a graduated cylinder. The driver then inserts the hydrometer into the fuel and spins it, ensuring it is not caught on the container sidewalls. The driver is now reading the API gravity of the product sample. Notice that the driver is looking at eye level through the meniscus to ensure he is getting an accurate reading. A temperature reading is also taken. Raise the hydrometer just enough to read the temperature without removing it completely out of the liquid. Removing it from the liquid will adversely affect the measurement. Using the API conversion wheel, the driver converts the measured gravity to the gravity at the standard temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. For example, if a gravity reading of 42 is obtained at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, this would convert to a corrected 40.5 API gravity at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. If the API gravity of the sample corrected to 60 degrees Fahrenheit is more than plus or minus one whole number indicated on the bill of lading, do not leave the terminal with the load. Contact Titan Quality Control or the terminal staff immediately. When using the handheld densitometer, the driver places the instrument gauge in the fuel and presses the button, then releases the button bringing fuel into the instrument where a temperature corrected gravity will be determined. The densitometer itself must be within 10 degrees Fahrenheit of the fuel temperature 
or an incorrect reading may result. The transport driver completes the release certificate by recording the results of the post-load inspection. This should include a clear and bright for sample description and the fuel API gravity. If Avgas was loaded, the color of the product should be recorded. If Jet A with Fizzy was loaded, the color of the product, Fizzy meter readings, and the total amount of Fizzy injected should be recorded. Finally, the transport driver signs the certificate. If the release certificate is not filled out properly, the airport may reject the load. Copies of the release certificate and the bill of lading are given to the terminal personnel prior to departure. Before departing the terminal, the driver checks the transport to ensure that all dust caps have been installed on the load couplings. Discharge hoses may be stowed either in a compartment or with dust caps or plugs. After arriving at the airfield, the driver or airport representative connects the bonding wire to the designated point on the transport trailer. The driver applies the handbrake, switches off the engine, opens the internal valves and allows the product in the transport to settle for 10 minutes before any product samples can be taken. The purpose of this additional settling time is to allow any contamination to settle out of the load prior to offloading into airport storage. Water may contaminate aviation fuels by condensation in storage or transport tanks or through leaks in hatch covers and vent lines. Dirt and rust may contaminate aviation fuels from corroded pipes or tanks. Other products, especially diesel fuel dyes, may contaminate aviation fuels through improper handling. Also, greases used in swivel lubrication may also contaminate products if the grease penetrates internal seals. While the transport is settling, the driver contacts the airfield representative to begin the pre-discharge inspection and check the documentation. The driver hands over the product release certificate, certificate of analysis, and the bill of lading. Never assume anything. Both the driver and the airport representative should verify the product on the truck is the product ordered and that the bill of lading is accurate. The release certificate and the bill of lading contain the following information. Product grade and quantity, batch number, date, batch API gravity, the amount of fizzy, and certification that the product was free from contaminants and water after loading. The airport representative should confirm the receiving tank has capacity to receive the product load prior to offloading. When the 10-minute settling time has elapsed, a one-gallon sample is obtained from each transport compartment to be offloaded, or two-gallon sample minimum if it is a single compartment. The samples are drawn into a bonded white porcelain bucket and examined for color, evidence of water or dirt, or any signs of contamination. If available, we recommend a water detection device be used. Products showing incorrect color or more than traces of water or dirt persisting after withdrawal of a reasonable amount of fuel from any one compartment must not be accepted. The airport representative must perform an API gravity check on the load to verify it is no more than one degree different than the gravity recorded on the release certificate. If the corrected API gravity differs by more than one degree, the matter must be investigated. If a satisfactory explanation cannot be found, the load must not be discharged. If the airport staff does not do an API gravity check, the carrier is not permitted to discharge the load. The driver and the airport representative must confirm that the product is to be offloaded into the proper tank and that the offloading hose is clean and dry. All deliveries must be attended by both an airport representative and the transport driver throughout the entire delivery. Offloading shall cease if the airport operator leaves the offloading area. Please contact Titan Quality Control personnel if this is an ongoing problem at any Titan Fuels Airport delivery location. Aviation fuel storage is clearly marked with product-specific EI decals and product-grade signs. Offload couplings for Avgas 100 LL are painted blue and Jet A couplings are painted black. Offload couplings should be grade selective, 4 inch for Jet A and 3 inch for Avgas 100 LL. 
Truck pumps may only be used if the pump is attached to the trailer or the truck and trailer are dedicated for one product. Truck pumps may contain dirt, water, or other products which may contaminate aviation fuels. If all the checks prove satisfactory, then the driver can prepare to offload the product. Open the manifold valves. If present, the offloading meter is zeroed and the on-site offloading pump is switched on. The dead man is held continuously if the product is pumped off the transport or the load may be gravity discharged if the receiving tanks are underground. Check all hoses and couplings for drips or leaks throughout the delivery and discontinue immediately if any are noticed. At the end of the delivery, the loading pump is switched off and all valves are closed. The offloading hose and bonding wire are disconnected and stowed. Before moving the transport truck, the driver should double check that all offloading hoses are disconnected and that the couplings and hose dust caps are installed properly. All valves should be closed. The airfield representative signs the release certificate certifying that the proper amount of fuel was delivered to the proper product tank. Any discrepancies must be noted and corrected prior to signing the release certificate. If a satisfactory result is not achieved, Titan Aviation Fuels must be contacted prior to the transport departing the airport. The yellow copy of the signed release certificate is given to the airport representative. The carrier keeps the green copy to accompany his records and the original must be sent to Titan Aviation Fuels. In the event of an emergency such as a spill, rollover, cross drop or vehicular accident, the Titan Quality Control Division should be contacted promptly at 1-800-334-5732. By giving special attention to the loading and delivery of aviation products, clean, dry, and on-specification fuel will be delivered to our customers. Your role is vital to aviation safety.